Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got a lot of fun DIY crafts coming your way. I've got a few sweet friends who are joining me today and I'll explain those details a little bit later. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on some farmhouse rustic Christmas home decor crafts. So let's get started with project number one. Now all my supplies for this project came from Walmart. Some of this black felt, some of this like cream color felt. I would have gone for a green felt but they just didn't have any color I like so this is a nice kind of thick green fabric and then I'll also be using some of this crochet thread in black and cream and some of this like black rope type stuff um, you can use twine if you want you're going to need some yarn darning needles if you choose to do the crochet thread and to start out I just picked a font I liked and I printed off the number 25 it's about oh four four by seven inch size numbers okay I cut out four pieces of black felt and basically to get the size fold your paper in half copy paper that's the size of my felt <laughs> and now I'm going to go ahead and just cut my letters out or my numbers out now when I chose the numbers I wanted numbers that were kind of thick uh, in design and you'll see that some of them you know weren't quite as thick in areas so I just cut it a little bit thicker all the way around but you know you whatever number styles you want and then I'm just going to go ahead and pin both of my numbers to the cream colored fabric and then I will get those cut out um, you could use a white color fabric as well obviously I chose cream because it's a little softer and then, like I said, I'm going to come in and cut these out, and you only need to use one piece of felt, okay? You don't need it a duplicate or anything like that, All right? So just show you kind of cutting things out here so you know that I did, in fact, do it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, why am I leaving this in my video? But, you know, I want to show you. Here's my numbers all cut out really cute, and then I just freehanded a holly leaf, you know, uh, my one of my papers there, I printed out the numbers too small at first, so I'm just going to use it, and I just freehanded a holly leaf. It turns out being a little bit too big, but I kind of glue it to make up for it. I just went ahead and cut two because the paper was folded in half, and I'm going to cut, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. You need eight pieces of fabric here because I'm going to double it up. If you're using felt, you just need like four leaves, or maybe only two if you only want one holly leaf per project, but I wanted two holly leaves per project and I wanted two pieces of fabric per leaf so that it gives me a really nice kind of thickness to it okay so get all of these cut out again you know you could have one holly leaf per project two holly leaf you know if you use felt you might only want to cut one of each I'm going to use beacon fabritac glue here for these and if you are not a sewer go ahead and glue these fully together I'm just going to add a little bit of glue down the center so that I can go around and sew around the edges but you can use fabritac glue or a hot glue for this uh, project all the projects today um, well maybe except for number four <laughs> anyway I'm going to kind of get these glued together and then take them to my sewing machine sew around the edges just to give it a little bit of something something now if you want the look of sewing you can take like an extra fine sharpie marker they have lots of colors for those you can get white you know black whatever and you can just make cute little dash lines around you know the leaves and the rest of the project that we're going to be doing today you can use the sharpie marker so this is what it looks like all sewn up and then i'm going to just kind of go ahead and pull around the edges of the fabric of all the leaves kind of give it a little bit of fraying just to give it that little bit of a rustic look of course you don't have to do this if you don't want to either if you're using a fabric for your holly leaves and then i'm going to come in and glue my numbers down again just in the center if you're a gluer of the whole project go ahead and glue them down really nice all the way around the edges okay get the five on there yeah i like these because i just like how thick the um letters were or numbers where I keep wanting to call them letters. I think it was just a Georgia font. Now, if you're a gluer, go ahead and put your two pieces of felt together and you're gonna glue just around three edges, leaving one edge open for stuffing, okay? Now, I am not going to glue it yet. I wanna take some of that cream crochet thread, a yarn darner needle, only because it's got a nice large opening to get this thicker crochet thread through nice long chunk not one end and i'm going to come from the back side of the number pull it all the way through till you reach 
the knot hits the back. You can see what it looks like there all the way through. I'm just going to make little stitches. I'm going to come about a quarter inch apart. I'm going to go from the front to the back and pull my thread all the way through. You could use regular thread for this, but I want to crochet thread because it was a little bit thicker looking. Then I'm going to come again from the back to the front about a quarter inch apart, pull it all the way through, front to the back, pulling it all the way through, and I'm just making easy little stitches here. Okay, nice little straight stitches, about a quarter inch in length. I'll do a few more here. Just so it's nice and easy, front to back, space over about a quarter inch, and back to front. Nice and simple. Okay, and then I'm going to do this process all the way around the two and, of course, all the way around the five. This is what it looks like when it's all done. I did it off camera there. And now I'm going to put my two pieces of felt together. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and glue around the edges first just to hold it in place. The two long sides and one short side, again, leaving like the top edge. It doesn't matter which edge, but the top edge open to stuff these because we're going to just make like cute little hang, a cute little hanging pillow ensemble here. All right. And then once I get it all glued together, I'm going to come in with that black crochet thread and I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the numbers. And I'm going to take that felt in one corner and I'm going to pull it apart where I can pull that thread through and hide the knot in between the two pieces of felt. And then I'm going to start just making my little stitches all the way around just like I did on the numbers. Okay, I just didn't want that knot to show. So where I first glued, I pulled it apart and then I, you know, put that needle and thread through the top layer of the felt, pulled it all the way through so the knot is securely hidden and then closed it together and made my stitches. Now you can see I did my stitches all the way around and I have a nice big long piece of string still left. One still has a needle on it because we still have to stuff the top, right? And then I want to finish sewing around those top edges. So I'm just using some pillow stuffing here. I get at Walmart. It's like the uh, standard queen size pillow for like $3.50. And I'm gonna stuff both of these with some of that. Not too full, but you know, so it's nice and plump. Right, and then I'm going to take some of that rope, this black rope stuff. I just cut off a big long chunk. I end up cutting a little shorter, but just, you know, probably 20 inches or so. And I'm going to take one end of that and glue it in the center on the back of that felt of the pillow. And here I'm just seeing how long I want it. So you see how long you want it. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Add some glue and then glue that end to the inside back of that felt. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and glue that whole top together, adding a little bit more glue on that rope area. Press it and glue it together. We don't want our rope to fall out. We want glue on both sides so it's nice and stuck to the felt. And then I'm going to come back in and finish my stitches along the top of both of the little pillows. Okay, all the way across. And I just stitched kind of right through the rope, I believe. You could use twine for this if you want, if you don't find any rope or some cute crochet ribbon, whatever you like. Now, when I get to the end, I want to hide that knot again, right? So I'm going to pull it back apart here and I'm going to come in through the back, just one piece of felt, pull it through. And then I'm just going to take that needle and pull it through one of the stitches, make a little loop here and then pull my string through it and knot it off, cut off the excess and then tuck that inside and glue it back together. So hopefully that made sense, but here's what it looks like. Everything's all put together. Now I'm going to use these pom-poms from Dollar Tree. It's got kind of these really kind of dark red pom-poms in it right here. All right, a couple of bells, got those at Hobby Lobby, a couple of rusty safety pins, um, and just a little strip of some plaid fabric. And what I did is just plaid fabric I picked up at Walmart, I believe, and I just rip, a, make a little slit, of course, like here, and rip like a one inch strip. And then I think I cut it down to like, oh, five or six inches, something like that. And then I'm just going to make a simple little kind of knot right around the uh, black string there at the top of the pillow. Just a little like half knot, really, because it's not a full knot, right? Just a little half knot, I guess, if you want to say. And then my leaves, like I said earlier, my hollow leaves are too big, so I'm just going to 
fold a little bit down and glue it. Not a big deal. That makes up for it. And I need one more tiny berry. They don't put enough in the pack. So I'm taking one of the big ones and I'm cutting off a chunk of that pom-pom. Add a little fabric tack glue in the center and I form it into a tiny little berry. Now I have enough berries. <laughs> I'm going to take the safety pin and that bell and I'm just going to safety pin through that center knot of that fabric on both of the pillows. Yeah, it was a great way to make an extra tiny little pom-pom, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and glue my holly leaves together just to make them even shorter yet. And then I'm going to glue the pair at the top of the each of the numbers. right up under that bow. That bell in that little bow ensemble will just kind of hang nicely over the holly leaves when this is in its upright position. This will look really cute, like, you know, hanging on a tree. You can make these any size, really, or hanging on a doorknob, anything like that. I thought these would be really cute if you made them about half the size to, you know, make a tree ornaments would be super cute. So on each of the holly leaves, I'm gluing one big pom-pom and two little pom-poms and then to finish it all off i'm going to use some of this glitter dust i use it every christmas i love it i'll have a link down below where i get it from etsy it's a sheer spray with extra fine silver glitter in it and that makes it this project complete Let's see who's going to be joining me today for lots of Christmas in July DIYs. Today, my sweet friends Wendy, who is White Sparrow Living Loot 12.6, Patty, who is Patty J. Good, and Emily, who is Farm Charm Chic here on YouTube, are coming together to bring you tons of Christmas crafts. You're just going to love what we came up with. We have a playlist link for you. It'll be in my description box as well as pinned in my comments so that there is one convenient location for you to check out all these DIY crafts. Make sure you go to their channels when you're done watching my video. Watch them. Let them know I sent you. If you haven't seen your channels before, you are going to love everything we've come up with. I just know it. With that said, let's move on to project number two. For this project, I hand drew a large tree pattern, and it is 21 inches in length, and then the bottom is 18 inches, the middle is 15 inches, and the top is 10 inches in height. And I drew this on the fold of a uh, just some freezer paper here. And so when you unfold it, that's where you're, of course, going to get all your measurements. And I'm just cutting it out, of course, using this for my pattern. I made it really big because I want to make like a cute big tree pillow. I just thought that would be fun. This is the front, all right? Now, if you want it, your pillow all the same size, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute, you're going to want to cut two of these. What I want to do is I want the front fabric a little bit smaller than the back fabric. So it almost kind of gives it a silhouette here. So I'm coming in with another piece of freezer paper and about a half inch out from the original pattern, I'm redrawing a new pattern piece for the back piece. Again, this is optional. You can make them both the exact same size and just use, you know, the front piece those measurements or you know make whatever size you want if you want to just draw it out so there's the back here's the front and now you can see that kind of silhouette around that front pattern so for the back pattern I'm going to use this fabric from Walmart this fabric came from Hobby Lobby and then I want to make a bow and I'm not sure at this point which of these plaids I'm going to use I end up using the top one so for the back this fabric is it's like a hundred percent cotton waverly fabric it's like cream shade it's almost thick like a duck cloth I love to use it so I pin the back pattern to that the front pattern I'm pinning 
to this cute kind of olive colored dot fabric. And I'll go ahead and cut both of those out off camera. So here's what we've got when everything's cut out. You can see that back piece as our silhouette, the front piece. I just like that look. I thought it would make the front piece kind of stand out more. Now you can use Beak of Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue for this if you want. If you do that, you're gonna go ahead and glue your pattern pieces together all the way around, but you're gonna want to leave somewhere at the bottom a little, you know, five or six inch space to stuff your pillow, right? I'm gonna go ahead and sew my pillow all the way around again, just as, you know, I told my non-sewers, leaving a, about a five or six inch opening to be able to stuff this pillow. Now, when I sew this, I decided I just wanted to add a little bit of a decorative touch. So if you're a sewer, you can do this or not do this. But I went around twice. I made like a little cute double sewing line around this pillow just to, you know, give it a little something something extra this is what that looks like so again you don't need to do that I just did it and it was fun and you can see I my sewing's not straight or anything like that I think that lends to the character of it I don't try to be perfect with these when I'm doing kind of these farmhouse rustic type you know projects and stuff like I said I think it just lends to the character once you have sewn or glued your pillow go ahead and stuff it nice and tight or as tight as you want it Again, using the pillows from Walmart for stuffing. And if you're a sewer, you can, or excuse me, if you're a gluer, you can go ahead and glue that opening closed. If you're a sewer, you can go in and sew that opening closed, of course. Now I'm using these star ornaments. I picked up at Hobby Lobby last year, $2.99, and I got them 40% off. Okay, and then what I did is I traced around it and then I cut the pattern about a quarter inch shorter all the way around. And then I did the same thing again so that I have two star patterns here all right one a little shorter than the other i'm going to take the larger pattern and i'm going to go ahead and pin it and cut it out of the same fabric that i used for the back pattern of the tree okay now the reason i'm doing this is because and you don't have to do this i want to add a little bit of felt so that's what i'm cutting out of the smaller pattern of the star so that we can add it to the front of the wood star and make it look like kind of a cute quilted type ornament. But you could just add fabric to the front without any felt or of course add the felt so it looks puffy or don't use anything at all. Maybe you don't even want a star on it. I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun. So I'm gluing the felt to the back of the larger piece of fabric and then before I glue it on, I want to go ahead and sew around the edges. Again, you could use an extra fine Sharpie marker and make little dash lines. And here's what my sewing looks like just so it kind of fits in with the sewing of the pillow. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull around the edges of the star on the fabric, you know, fray the edges a little bit, give us a rustic look. And then I'm gonna add glue to the felt and then glue around the edges of that felt on the fabric. And I'll show you here why in just a minute. I'm getting it right along the edge of that felt. And so now when I place this down, I see how my fingers are coming in and I am just kind of pushing that fabric up against that felt all right to kind of give it like a quilted look and this is what it looks like nice and easy okay now I'm taking about a two inch wide strip of fabric here just ripping a nice two inch wide strip setting that aside I'm going to use some sandpaper here and normally I would pull on the threads but I thought for some reason to try sandpaper and so I'm just sanding down the edges of my fabric and it actually gives it a nice more soft wispy frayed look as you can see here versus if I would have pulled along the edges of the fabric so I kind of like it better now I'm taking these letter board letters they're two inches tall I get them from Hobby Lobby $7.99 I wait for them to go 40% off here's the number here if you want to order them online I'm picking out the two and the five I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary a little black dress paint and I'm going to go ahead and paint around the sides and the top of the numbers, two coats, and I go ahead and spray them with a sealer since we're just painting on plastic so it doesn't peel. All right, now I'm just making a simple bow with that two-inch wide ripped strip of fabric. And then I've got some red and brown kind of variegated twine. You get this at Dollar Tree. I'm going to make another little simple bow. I'll set that aside for a minute. And then what I'm going to do is take the numbers two and five and I'm going to glue it to the center of the star now you may not want to do the star ensemble just adding the bows 
maybe a bell and stuff for like I'm going to do might be all you want on your tree. But you know, just hopefully it gives you some inspiration. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the fabric bow kind of up near the top of the tree. I'm gonna use this bell and safety pin, just kind of like in the first project. I'll go ahead and glue down the twine bow as well. And then I'll take that bell and safety pin, put it through the loop of the star, add it to the uh, center of that bow ensemble, and that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number three. For this project, I am freehanding another pattern and I'm just gonna make a little gingerbread man. I think it only stands about eight inches tall. I know we've made some gingerbread in the past, but I kind of wanted this to have like really long legs as you see here <laughs> and just kind of be a little bit chubby and fun. This is gonna be more primitive style, but you don't have to make it as primitive as I do. And once I just kind of freehand and you know, draw that pattern. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Now you could search gingerbread patterns, free gingerbread patterns on like Google or something and, you know, download one and then you don't have to freehand it if you're not such a great drawer. I'm not either, but you know, I try my best. <laughs> I'm using this felt that I get at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to need two pieces. I pin the gingerbread to it and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. So you want two pieces, of course. And I went ahead, if you can look at my pattern at the legs, I went ahead and made them even longer still when I cut that pattern out. I want them to just kind of look long and lean and, you know, lanky. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use Distress Oxide Vintage Photo here. I want to just kind of make that fabric darker. So I'm just, with the pad of the ink there, just rubbing it on front and back of our gingerbread. And once that's done, I'm going to bring in some of that black crochet string again, just a nice long piece, not one end of it. And I want to make some eyes on here. Now, you can just use a Sharpie marker like I'm going to do here, just a Sharpie marker. I'm just making the eye spot. So I'm bringing that crochet thread from the back to the front, and I'm going to pull it all the way through until that knot touches the back of the fabric. Then with my left hand, I'm going to grab that string. Do you see I'm holding it? And you're going to just take that string and you're going to wrap it twice around your needle and you're going to put it back in. Now don't go back through the same hole. You want to go to a little bit to the side of it and then take your needle, poke it back through the front of the fabric to the back and pull it all the way through. And you've got an eye. This is a French knot. So back to the front, pull it all the way through, grab that thread with your left hand, wrap your needle around it twice, come next to that hole and then pull your needle from the front to the back all the way through, and you have two French knots for eyes. Again, you could just use a Sharpie marker and make two really big black eyes if that's what you wanna do. Now I'm just on the back and I'm just tying it off in a little knot so it doesn't come out. I'm just using a, a stitch that's on the back here to make a little knot. There we go, and then I'll just cut off the excess. And now if you're a gluer, go ahead and go all the way around your gingerbread man, around the edges, and I would suggest leaving the top of the head open for stuffing. And then once you stuff it, you can go ahead and glue that head closed. I'm going to use some of this really thin twine, all right? And where I get this, you can get it Walmart or Dollar Tree has it. It looks kind of like this, all right? And what I do is I just cut off a great big long piece and then I just make a little slit and I pull that ribbon apart and then I get this really thin, thin twine. And I'm gonna use this to put my gingerbread together. I'm coming from the front only. I'm pulling it all the way through, one end is knotted, so that way it's hidden, right? See how I'm tucking it inside? And then I'm coming from the back and then to the front and I'm pulling it all the way through and that thread's gonna wrap around the side of the gingerbread here. 
and you're just going to follow this stitch pattern all the way around. So I'm coming from the back to the front. See as I come from the back to the front all the way through, that stitch wraps around the side. All right? Just like that. Nice and easy. It's just a nice little stitch. You don't have to stitch it all again. You can just glue it or you can do the stitches like we did on the um, first project. Now what I've done here is I've come to the end of my one piece of twine. Remember, because I said I just cut like big long pieces off. I've come to the end, so I'm going to do a little stuffing here. All right? I'm going to stuff as far as I can. And then what I'll do is I will sew a few more stitches around the edge, stuff a little bit more, you know, sew a few more stitches around the edge, stuff a little bit more until I get to the end and I can close up my gingerbread man. So I'm going to do a little bit more here. And now I've gotten around to the last leg area, the area of the leg, last leg. That sounded funny to me. <laughs> Doing my little wraparound stitch here, again, following through. And it only took two pieces of the thin twine. And again, I'm, you know, I'm guessing they were probably about 30 some inches a piece. Anyway, once I get almost to around that leg, I'm going to finish stuffing here. And then to close this off, I pull my last stitch around to the back side and I just kind of pull it through one of the stitches, leave a little loop, and then I pull that twine through the loop to make a knot. I'll go ahead and cut off the excess and I'm going to take a needle and just open up the area right next to a stitch there, add some glue, and then use my needle to poke the edge of that twine into the middle of the gingerbread man and smush it closed. Nice and easy. <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in like a rusty safety pin and a bell, a couple of little buttons, a tiny wood heart, and a one-inch strip of ripped fabric. All right, I'm going to take my little uh, buttons and the wood heart, and I'm just using that same Distress Oxide Vintage Photo ink, and I'm just, you know, adding some color onto those. And then I'm going to take some of that same thin twine and thread it through the buttons. You could leave it with no twine. I just... I don't know, I just don't like to leave empty holes when I use buttons for decoration. I've got to fill them up. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So just filling them up, knotting them off the back so the twine doesn't come out. And now I've got this like leftover instant coffee I mixed with water. It's just a little bit in the bottle. That's why it's kind of coming out all thick and like splotchy. But that's okay because it's going to make this gingerbread look all primitive. Um, and I'm just, you know, spraying it on and I'm rubbing it in really good. See how it comes out splotchy? That's okay. I'm all right with it. If I'd you know, made a new batch, it wouldn't come out splotchy, but like I said, I'm okay with that. I want it to look really primitive. And now, setting that aside to dry a little bit, I'm taking some of that ink, and I'm just kind of distressing my ripped strip of fabric. And then I'm going to come around the neck of the gingerbread and tie it around the neck, make a little knot so we have a little scarf. Just decorating our little guy up here. And then I'm going to take those two little buttons, and I'm going to glue them to the center of his little belly. And then I'm going to take that little heart and I'm just going to glue it anywhere on there. I chose to kind of glue it down on one of the legs. And then I'm going to take that same brown and red twine like we've used on our other projects. I'm going to ink it up a little bit so it's nice and distressed too. Here I'm just, you know, cutting the length of my tails. And I'm going to add that bell and safety pin to the center of that and then into the knot of that ribbon. Now I've got a little piece of fabric here that I distressed and sewed around. This is what I did, just kind of cut a piece of fabric, sand it around the edges to kind of distress it, and then you can take it to the sewing machine if you're a sewer. If you're not, fine marker, like I've been talking about, a Sharpie marker, and make some little dash lines for sewing. And now I'm taking that ink pad and I'm inking these up so you can see kind of how both of them look. I'm going to show you what this one with the Sharpie marker looks like. It looks really cute that way. So if you're not a sewer, it looks cute. I'm taking these clickable stamps you can get at Michael's. I spell out the word jolly, and I'm going to stamp that onto my fabric tag. Okay. You can make any words you want. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this down right up underneath that rusty bell there. And I'm going to kind of glue the end a little bit too so it's kind of crinkled up. And I'm going to take this multi-purpose adhesive spray, and I like to use pumpkin pie, spice spray, 
just because it's got all the yummy smells in it. And I spray the adhesive spray anywhere I want to on the gingerbread. And then I, you know, sprinkle that pumpkin pie spice over the top in all the areas. You could do as little as you want, as much as you want. I get a little bit carried away, kind of like on the tag and stuff. I mean, this guy looks like he ran through <laughs> <laughs> a like dumpster of pumpkin spice but it's okay it just makes him more primitive looking <laughs> a little bit too much but I'm okay with it and I'm going to just kind of crinkle and wrinkle my ribbon ends here and glue it glue those into place so they're not just kind of hanging give it a little more personality do a little bit more of you know adding even on the back side you know some inking and some more of the adhesive spray some more of the coffee mixture spray here's where I should have stopped but then I sprayed one onto the fabric tag and got too much and now he just looks <laughs> like an explosion but with that said that makes this project complete Let's move on to our last project, number four. Now, this is a kit from craftingwithkimber.com. I'll have a link down below uh, where you can purchase it from. There's a lot more to the kit. I'll have a picture here so you can see what that looks like. It's about four inches tall and about 15 inches long, the main sign. And it comes, the pieces I'm going to use, these words that say gingerbread bakery and the little gingerbread man. And a couple of these little mini hearts that also come with craftingwithkimber.com. I'll have that link down below. The snowflakes from Dollar Tree, beads from Walmart, and then these are all the different paints I'm going to be using. Basically a white, a black, a red, and two color brown to mix together to do my gingerbread. So Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Barn Red is what I'm going to paint the main sign with. I do a couple of coats front and back here. Trying to be careful not to get along the sides so I don't have to worry about painting the sides. I'm just going to leave the sides the you know color of the wood. You know, when the laser cuts, it leaves a nice dark edge. And then I'm coming in here and I'm painting just the front of the gingerbread man because obviously the back is going to be glued down. So I mix those two paints together to give me a kind of a nice uh, shade of brown that I liked. Good enough for my gingerbread. And I'll use some little light pink paint here and paint a heart. Again, those come from craftingwithkimber.com. And then I'm coming in with the white swan uh, chalk paint here and painting my words. I'm only going to show a little bit of painting here because I actually go really slow again because I'm trying to keep the paint on top and not go around the edges and just leave that nice kind of, you know, dark edge from the cut of the laser so it looks all nice and finished. Okay, so just showing a little bit, but I do two coats of this white swan, Debbie's Design Diary White Swan Chalk Paint. Now I'm going to come in and I'm just, I sand through the center of all my pieces and then around the edge because I kind of want a nice like light uh, edging around the sign as you can see there and I'll, you know, you can look to the right on my gingerbread. He's all sanded off to, has a, just kind of a, that nice perimeter border around the edges from sanding. So what that looks like. It here's up close with the gingerbread and the little heart. I'm going to use Distress Black Ink. And I'm going to do shading around it. You could do it with paint, but I'm used to inking when I do like scrapbooking. So I'm just using a foam dauber here, dipping it in the ink, wiping the excess off on a paper towel, and just shading around the edges of my sign here. I'll do it on the gingerbread as well. And on the sign here, I wanted to just diffuse it out a little bit. So I'm dipping a clean paintbrush in water and just kind of diffusing out that ink. You can do that with these Distress inks. Just kind of give me a nice little bit of a wider diffused look around the edge. I'm going to use my heat tool here and heat that edging there. 
And then I'm going to come in with some sandpaper because I want my little sanded border to come back around again. I don't want that uh, inking to go all the way to the edge. Otherwise, why did I sand around the edge in the first place? So this is what it looks like with a little bit of shading. And then with the gingerbread man, I'm just going to come in and do a little inking around him because I went, you know, light enough with the inking. I didn't want to bring out the water and stuff again. And then I'll just, once I got that ink on there, I'll just come in and sand again to add that little bit of wood perimeter, you know, around that shading area. Here's what that looks like. You could do the same thing with like dry brushing if you want. And then I made a little smiley face, used a pencil, and I'm just coming in with a Sharpie marker to make that smiley face. And then this is a ball burnisher. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree, and I'm placing two little red dots above each side of the smiley face. And then I'm going to come in with some more paint, and I'm going to drag those dots down just like that to make a little heart. And you can come back in and do it a couple times. These are called dip dot hearts if you come from a world of taupe hole painting that's what that looks like and now I've mixed some of that white swan chalk paint with water I'm using my fan brush wiping off the excess and I'm going to tap my fan brush to get me some splatters on my sign and on my little gingerbread man now I'm going to take that same ball burnisher or stylus is what you call it the big end and I'm just going to come in and make some eyes with some black paint so I dip the fatter end of the ball into black paint and made some little eyes. Now I'm taking a really thin, thin brush here and I wanna come in with that white swan chalk paint and I just wanna make some squiggles down both of the arms and above both of the legs, right down near the bottom of both of the legs, just to give it that personality. This is what it looks like. And then I'm going to come in with the smaller end of that stylus or ball burnisher, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to add just a little more decorative touch, making some little dots, trio of dots here and there. And then I'm going to make one tiny little dot in each of the eyes just to give it a little something more. And that's what our little gingerbread looks like when he's all done. Super cute. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue the heart to the center of our gingerbread man. And then we're going to go ahead and get everything glued to our sign. Just using my trusty Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here. You could use super glue, especially on the letters, since, you know, the tips of super glue is pretty fine, and that would work well, so that's an option. And I'm just going to kind of center everything in the middle of our board here. I love this set. It's just, it's really adorable, easy to do, and who doesn't love a cute gingerbread craft, right? Glue down our gingerbread man. We've got our gingerbread bakery words on there. The holes are already in the sign, so I'm going to come in and add two different kinds of twine here, regular twine and then that red and brown variegated one. Just cut a piece as long as I want it. Put both of them together. I put some tape on one end so I could thread it through. Hole on the right side, then I'm adding one of those uh, snowflakes. I painted the snowflakes white. Those again came from Dollar Tree, and I'm adding some beads, two red and a white bead in between each of the snowflakes. The beads all came again from Walmart at Christmas. Dollar Tree has tons of beads. Just threading that little ensemble on there. And then I'll bring the other end, once I pull it the right length, other end back through the other circle of the sign there. And then once I've got the length I want, I'm gonna go ahead and just tie a knot in the front of the sign Gives it a cute rustic look, leaving that knot show. Cut off the excess and smush the ends. I like to say smush the ends. <laughs> Other side, tie a knot. Perfect, and then cut off the excess and smush the ends. Now off camera, I do take a couple of plaid pieces of fabric like I used on a tree pillow, and I wrap them around this side here of the twine. I'm gonna do a little bit of glitter dust, not a lot because we've already got all the dots and stuff on there, so we don't want it too much, but just a slight little bit when the light catches it, you might see a little glitter, and that makes this project complete. So I hope you liked all the crafts I came up with today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite and that you want to make for this upcoming Christmas season or right now because, you know, after all, it is Christmas in July. Please give this video a thumbs up. It does help my channel to grow. I know I say that a lot, but it really does because it catches that old YouTube algorithm and it gets my video out there to more people that may have not seen my videos before. 
If you walked in here for the first time and you're checking things out, or maybe you're coming over from one of my other Sweet Friends channels, welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad to have you here with me. If you're digging what you saw today, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Thank you again to Wendy and Patty and Emily for joining me today to bring lots of Christmas inspiration to our friends out there. And remember, everybody, the playlist link will be in my description box and pinned in my comments. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Ever feel like you're staring at a huge mountain before you, knowing it has to be climbed, but not feeling you prepared in advance to gain access to the top with the tools you need to make it so high up? Life can seem that way sometimes. It can feel as though the circumstances you're going through feels impossible. You feel inadequate to face it, and you lack the tools and motivation to arrive victorious at the top. But God says, do not fear. He says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Joshua 1.9 in the Bible states, be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Deuteronomy 31.6 in the Bible says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. And 2 Chronicles 15, 7, also in the Bible says, But as for you, be strong, do not give up, for your works will be rewarded. There seems to be a running theme with all these scriptures about how God wants you to take up the trial you're facing without fear and with his strength and not giving up because he is with you. So do you still feel the daunting height of that mountain is unattainable if God is with you? God gives you all you need within your body, mind, and spirit to take up that fight, finish the race, and reach that mountaintop. So the next question is this, once you reach the top, then what? You need to stop, rest in God, worship Him, breathe in His grace, and prepare to climb that mountain again. Moses did it seven times. And I know nobody wants to reclimb any mountain. You want to forget it, you want to move on, and you want to hope there's never another mountain that high to climb again. But that isn't feasible, is it? There will always be some kind of mountain to face, and you will always need God's help to tackle it. So why did Moses climb that mountain seven times? Possibly because each time he climbed to the top, he faced the flames, he learned from God, he gained a new perspective, he saw a new vision, he worshipped God, he reduced any fears that he might have had, and he gained more strength for the next climb. With each climb to the top, you must also make it your intention to listen to God's word and learn to trust him. You have to be willing to walk straight up that mountain, face those flames, and get into his presence to allow him to carry you through the rest of life's circumstances. In the midst of all that climbing, God will deliver you from your fears. He will soar with you on eagle's wings and bring you through the trial you face. You must also remember past instances where God delivered you from those hard times to give you peace and knowing he can and will deliver you again. Climbing mountains isn't about just trying to make it through one more high peak, but it's ultimately about trusting God, his word, and knowing that his strength is your foundation. His purpose is clear. He will be beside you every step of the way. Luke 137 says nothing is impossible with God. Everything is done according to His glory and His purpose, so focus on God. Worship Him. Let Him lead you to every mountaintop without fear because He will never leave you. He will always guide you and He will always love you, and that's worth fighting for. That's worth gaining His strength for. That's worth tackling the height of that mountain. That is worth the reason to finish the climb, and it's worth taking time to praise Him for everything you have in that moment. I thank you for sharing your time with me. And I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.